Uh, very good evening, everyone. Welcome to the series of MTech, the great Amrita Alumni Country. Students are all optimistic about their future. Once that student has achieved a great height, we are proud of him or her to enlighten us about that knowledge. So, well, today we have the topic uh, entering the world of passive electronics. We have Krishna who will explain about the topic. He is working with the Intel company, which is very well for, known for manufacturing of the chipsets like uh, processors, motherboards, and we have their upcoming uh, graphics cards too. So he is working there as an analog system validation engineer. He's the Amrita alumni who has pursued MTech in embedded, so is, um, embedded system. From Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pita. So, so before getting into the session, if any of the participants have any queries, please type it in the chat box. So Krishna, I welcome you to the session. Therefore, we can start the series. Over to you right now. Uh, hi, uh, I hope I'm audible and um, I hope I'm audible and visible first, first of all. Yes, yes, yes. Very audible and visible. Okay, um, a very warm welcome to all the uh, participants um, present over here, um, students of the institution, as well as future students of the institution and uh, everyone in general. Um, as uh, thank you for the very kind intro. Um, I am Krishna and uh, I did my BTEC in electrical and electronics engineering in Amrita, Bangalore, followed by um, an MTEC in embedded systems in uh, Amrita, Coimbatore. So in between, I worked as a in teaching and in sales in uh, Baiju's the learning app, and following which I got an internship through campus placement in Intel India. Um, so just to extend um, what was introduced, uh, I primarily work on uh, powering um, any power supplies inside uh, any of your Intel processors, primarily for the server segments. So it's an analog domain and uh, I am responsible for uh, power validation over there. So any of your chips, uh, the amount of power it consumes, the amount of voltage or currents that are flowing inside, um, I'm responsible for validating that. My team, I would say so. And I perform a small role over there. And it's, a, it's been a great journey so far because of Amrita and I thank them. Um, I, can I get started uh, with my um, uh, what I'm planning to talk about? All right. Okay. So uh, let me just uh, share my screen. All right. If at any moment, uh, if there is a feeling that you're not able to see my screen or uh, if there is any audio or video issue, please do let us know. Um, just give me a moment and set up my screen. All right, so everyone, um, I welcome you once again to this session on uh, pervasive electronics. This is a topic which is very, very close to my heart. And uh, I'll just be giving an overview of this, not going very deep, just talking about why we require pervasive electronics. And uh, may maybe I might uh, answer a few queries about uh, how an Amrita MTech helped me understand this because my MTech was in embedded systems, which is one of the aspects of pervasive electronics. So giving, given the mixed nature of the audience, we have uh, some students from 12th standard, some students from BTEC and MTech over here. So I'll not go very deep. I'll just give a very uh, top level overview. All right. So Let's get started. I'm a big fan of memes. So I hope all of you, okay. I hope all of you enjoy the amount of um, memes that I have put uh, inside this presentation over here. So just to start, right, defining what is pervasive. Uh, it's basically in English, it means something that is present in all parts of something, right? I don't think that made a little more sense. So I'll just put it in a slightly more easier fashion. Uh, pervasive is something, let's say in electronics case, okay? That's why I have put the meme over here to make it more easily understandable. The electronics that we had in our, say, grandparents' time, okay? They were primarily in very, very high-end uh, machinery, 
right we had any acts or high level defense computers which used to consume entire entire rooms of you know energy so not saying that's a low brain activity but that is uh, this amount of spread over there right of the electronics is very very less as uh, we proceeded further in history we see electronics coming into college and university and company labs okay but still they used to be quite big and bulky and they used to do uh, only a few tasks because the memory was limited the amount of compute power was limited all that and as we started entering the 80s or 90s we started seeing electronics in everyday appliances like your tv fridge uh washing machines uh, walkmans etc right and now in this decade or uh, i would say at least since the last uh, 10 to 15 years or so in india we are seeing electronics in almost everything the combined with the amount of population that we have in this country it's a mind boggling amount of scale in which electronics can be implemented so starting from electronics in say supercomputers to electronics inside a pacemaker two electronics on my apple watch electronics is everywhere and anyone who studies electronics should be aware of this scale of implementation of electronics that we do right and this is what is known as pervasive electronics that is electronics everywhere any device that we touch it has some amount of electronics inside it right so what is the limitations of putting electronics in everything is it even a possible endeavor of ours so as we see right this pervasive word where electronics has to be implemented everywhere there are some limitations for that and it all these limitations must be crossed in order for the electronics to become pervasive right so one of the first limitations is the size of the electronics we can't have big bulky electronics that makes it very very difficult to move around we would prefer something that is portable something that is easy to carry but all the more uh, even though it is easy to carry it should do what we want it to do or what it is supposed to do at least right so one of the first limitations is this word pervasive the electronics over there are limited by size we can't have big bulky electronics which fill up an entire room we need something which is more pocket friendly or at least a bag friendly i would say right the second thing um which before i go into i would like to show this very interesting graph um to prove that the size of the electronics has been uh, reducing a lot okay so there are two ways in which one can look at it one is to reduce the physical size itself or the second way is a lot of electronic activities right they have to be uh, in order to uh, do a lot right you require a lot of transistors in electronic from a very top level if i have to say okay so the amount of transistors which is one of the basic building blocks of all electronics present around us today we are trying to increase that number to a as high number as possible right so this graph over here as we see on the x axis we have the years 1975 80 85 all the way till 2005 it's a slightly older graph but i'm sure it has the trend has just continued and the transistors per chip right which is there in the y axis okay so these are computer chips that i'm specifically talking about as you see over here right the number of transistors inside a microprocessor or inside a computer chip has been increasing pretty nicely and what that means is a microprocessor say in 1975 is much 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 less capable than a microprocessor in say 2005 because the amount of transistors crammed inside a 2005 microprocessor is so high similarly a 2005 microprocessor when you compare with the 2022 microprocessor our, the one that we have right now which will be much much more capable of performing a higher number of computations at a lower number of power and a lower amount of cost as well so one of the ways in which we reduce the size is reducing the size of the transistors inside these electronics right one more limitation of making electronics pervasive is energy consumed let's say each transistor without going too technically is consuming um one unit of energy okay in a standard computer chip we usually have a billion transistors or much much more for this example let's take a billion transistors 
so can we consume a billion units of energy that's not possible right so we must reduce the amount of energy consumed in each of these electronics so that pervasivity pervasivity is there right so if a lot of energy is required we require places to provide this energy that costs a lot of money right we require bigger batteries for anything that is portable we require bigger charging places right any electronics which needs to be made pervasive it needs to consume lower and lower amount of energy apart from being small in size and to show that i have just shown uh, another graph over here again the x axis is the years and the y axis over here is calculations per second per $1000 this is a very interesting graph if you see so every transistor of ours it is basically switching right it is a switch in the most fundamental sense and using a combination of these switchings we reach the gate level and from these gate levels we build higher and higher abstractions until your programming level right and what is the purpose of this programming it is to do some form of calculation that was the initial purposes at least okay so if i have to just look at the calculations done per second that tells me about the performance of my transistor now what i do is i don't take one transistor i instead take a whole bunch of it such that the cost of that system comes to about $1000 so how much calculations i can do in a computer chip for $1000 that is what this graph is saying and as you see that number is also increasing and this is not a linear increase this is a somewhat exponential increase and there is a future prediction as well as of now the amount of calculations our computers can do we have reached almost the level of one insect brain but let's say by 2060 we are supposed or at least predicted to reach the levels of the human brain at least that's the amount of calculations we must do and each of these calculations consume some amount of energy however small micro watt it may be right so we need to reduce the amount of energy consumed per transistor per computer chip we have to reduce the size of these chips such and we have to increase the compute power of that chip right there is a third limitation also of pervasive electronics it is limited by cost which is the most obvious thing right bigger electronics cost more electronics which do a higher amount of computation they cost more electronics which consume a lot of energy they cost more right so cost also has to be minimized in order to make electronics more pervasive so i have yet another interesting graph over here again on the x axis i have the years and on the y axis i have the dollars so what this graph says is how the transistor price has been reducing over time okay so we have billions of transistors right now in any of our average computer chips right if you see the cost of one transistor right now is 10 power minus 7 dollars that's a very very small amount but you multiply that by a billion and you reach quite a decent number and that number must be reduced further and further it becomes um to make okay to make electronics cheaper to manufacture it, it, it's a necessity because we make cheaper electronics of small size of higher compute power we'll be able to spread it across and we'll be able to do multiple different uh, activities with it right so i have just put in one small example over here of how electronics has evolved in in the previous many decades so we had one of the first uh, implementations of a let's say a computer which is the eniac which was used mostly for us defense and college research this was in the 1940s the era in which we got independence right so those eniacs used to consume big big amount of warehouses they used to consume huge amount of powers that sometimes substations were required to power them as we moved closer and closer to 1950s we started getting ibm mainframe computers these mainframe computers used to be the size of a room but they still used to consume a lot of power and though the size was reduced the power was more or less on a similar scale just a little lesser plus the amount of memory they had and the amount of computations they could do it was not at all uh, very high for modern day standards to give you an example the rocket which took astronauts to the moon 
the computation in that uh, are the computers in that were less powerful than any of our average mobiles in the pocket right now right that is the scale at which we have grown right now as we approach towards 70s and 80s we see the era of computers becoming much much more smaller small enough to at least move from a room to a desk or uh, let's say a table and uh, this is where the era of the pc came about right personal computers and if you notice some trend over here I, I, in the way i have put the images at least right in the 90s and the 2000s and the 2010s right i have put images of calculators mobile phones ipods or apple watches etc right so we have mainframes or ibms uh, i mean uh, eniacs or apple computers which are very general purpose but the your ti83 or ipods or nokia 1101 or apple watches right they are not so general purpose they there are only a specific amount of tasks that they can do or they are meant to do calculators calculate mobiles are used for calling ipod is used to listen to music at least the one shown in the picture here apple watches are used to listen to time uh, you can check your mail in that but there are only a very limited amount of activities that you can do right so what is it that the trend i'm showing over here and that is what i put as a meme over here that we should see something fishy in the trend at which electronics is developing right now right if you see to give you an example of what is that fishiness that i speak about in making electronics more pervasive right you have your average laptop okay you want to do web browsing in it you want to do gaming in it you want to do high end equation calculations i'm not talking about say 2 plus 2 is 4 i'm talking about let's say you want to do uh, multiple iterations of the gauss seidel algorithm or you want to calculate one very big differential equation etc right so that takes a lot of time you want your laptop to be a heart rate oxygen monitor you want your laptop to be a weather station which is sensing the atmospheric pressure temperature etc and is able to tell you the weather you want your laptop to be a gatekeeper for your house and open the door by recognizing the image if you want your laptop which is a general purpose computer to do all of this the problem is you require some special hardware to do each of these tasks and that drives up the cost of your laptop that's what i put in as the cost of the unit also if we make a laptop which is capable of doing all of this the power consumed by the laptop will be very high so what is the solution the solution is as devices keep getting smaller it is easier and easier to implement specialized devices and have them spread out and that is the trend that we see in electronics today there is an alternate school of thought which makes uh, let's say let's make a single device which does everything but it's much much more easier to just have a specialized device which does what it is meant to do very very well right you have industrial robots you have routers all of these are implementations of a computer but they are doing very very specific things and if you notice all the items that i have put over here they are small they are movable and they consume less power and they are cheap right your gps receivers cameras dvd players mp3 players photocopiers wearable devices set top box all of these do some form of computing they are small they are cheap they are affordable and you can have multiple of them okay they are very very easily accessible to multiple masses and when you make it like that that's what is pervasiveness of the electronics or what i mean by the spread of electronics right now we have electronics in coffee uh makers okay you can you know go to your office and when when you are coming back from your office when you are like say 15 minutes away from your home you just have to click a couple of buttons on your phone and that connects to the internet to your coffee pot and then it keeps coffee ready by the time you come home we have started putting electronics in places which are unimaginable also that's how spread we are getting and that is what i mean by embedded everything right we are putting electronics in places which was previously unimagined also and we are making new new applications but all these applications on the electronics which are doing it they are very very specialized and that's why you require a lot of them and they have a big spread and that is what is the embedded part embedded means it is going inside um let's say the electronics are implemented in small boards which are very very specialized and you are making multiple such smart boards to do multiple different applications from switching on your lights to making coffee to telling you gps to gaming consoles to internet everything right 
that is what i mean as embedded everything make specialized devices and spread them out nicely and since you have stayed so far here's another meme for you right you have a low cost low size low power easy to implement and does a specialized task kind of electronics that is basically embedded systems right so if i have to tell about um before i go into the companies of course okay if i have to tell about embedded systems unlike a traditional degree in say computer science which is more or less on the coding or software or ai ml end or even in the core triple e or ec which is more on the lines of actual hardware embedded systems is a beautiful combination of both and embedded systems is what makes pervasive electronics possible because you are making devices smaller and smaller you have to find out ways to code these devices to do the task that you want it to do any say controller inside your um, coffee pot i'll take that example itself right so in the coffee pot are you guys would have seen say a cafe coffee day or a buyer coffee machine right in multiple places that you have gone you press a button and coffee comes out so they have embedded systems inside that okay just to give you an example of how such a thing is made right you have a micro controller inside that who has multiple different tasks i would say one of the first tasks is to drive a motor to ground the coffee there is another motor which keeps track of the time so i have to ground it for exactly 5 seconds there is another motor which ensures that the coffee and milk are mixed in the right ratio and uh, this all is controlled by one microcontroller or a microprocessor and it is the job of the embedded engineers to code this so you require a knowledge of software over here but the software like say python or java work out for this no it doesn't you have special languages for electronics like the assembly language or c etc a uh, version of c of course okay all of you require a specialized hardware language and you require knowledge of software also and you combine them both in order to get embedded systems and we do you implement embedded systems in order to make electronics much much more pervasive right so we have the indian embedded ecosystem here so when i was making this slide i wanted to put in names of famous companies or i would say companies which are known to people who are very very disconnected also from electronics but i thought maybe i should put in names of companies which are upcoming or slightly smaller still but this shows the scale of the indian ecosystem at least for embedded these are not the most most popular companies i would say but these are still upcoming and they will become much much more popular in the public psyche uh, in the future i would say right and some of these companies even come down to our college for recruitment right so when you uh, when someone tells right there are, there is no embedded um, jobs available in india or uh, there are no embedded um, work there in india i think they are completely wrong india is going to emerge as the epic center for embedded system design and implementation and in the next few decades we will see embedded systems in everything in this country from traffic lights to drone based food delivery to coffee pots and uh, what not it's the most unimaginable thing also the amount of places where embedded systems can be put and it's a rising wave and anyone who does say an mtech or a btech with a specialization in embedded systems is really in for a great ride because this is a upcoming field right so just to give a quick summary of what i just told pervasive electronics is putting electronic system everywhere in the form of computing or sensing elements so just to give you a quick glance of computing and sensing elements um, i'll give you an example of uh, forest fires right so in california one of the biggest problems is having forest fires so what um, the government over there has done is they have taken a whole bunch of sensors which are capable of um, tracking the uh, getting the temperature as well as making a quick computation of whether this is a dangerous amount of temperature or not so these are very very tiny balls they put that on the helicopter about say 600 700 of those and they just spread it across the forest just throw it throw it in random places in the forest and what these electronics do is 
at any moment live they are getting the temperature out and uh, they are calculating whether this temperature is safe or not and if the temperature is unsafe they immediately communicate it to some center uh, where the people who are responsible for sending any forest fire uh, accident related uh, say um, uh, some water surveys or etc these guys will be able to see in the map that there is a issue that temperature in this part of the forest is very high right so this is again an example of pervasive electronics extremely spread out small low cost easy to implement right so that is what i mean by sensing elements which also do a bit of computing and this is what embedded systems enable us to do they are small in size they are high in compute power they are low cost and we have an extremely high amount of applications it's uh, it's so high that you can't even list it down right it's in the most unimaginable places also you should be able to put embedded systems and that gives an end to my top level overview of water pervasive electronics thank you and please do ask if any questions Uh, well, uh, we don't have any genuine questions or uh, any genuine uh, uh, response from the students also. Uh, so, therefore, we can wind up this session and let's call it a day, Krishna. Thank you, anyways, Krishna Ji. Okay. Have a nice day. Thank you. Okay.